everybody and welcome back on this Sunday, beautiful Sunday. Thank you for joining us for Bay Area Focus. Please welcome our next guest. It's another local author who penned the Perfectly Proper Paranormal Museum. Kirsten Weiss is here today and thank you so much for joining us. What made you come up with that title? <laughs> okay, let's try it again. What is it? The Perfectly Proper Paranormal Museum. Yeah, now that I have to keep saying it aloud, I'm kind of regretting I did. <laughs> yeah, well, I wanted to write about a paranormal museum. I got the idea from a Wall Street Journal article a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And then I was thinking, what kind of museum? What kind of museum? A perfectly proper paranormal museum. And <laughs> no one was more surprised than I when my publisher kept the name. I find you very interesting, and I've only known you for one minute, because I was reading um, some background information on you, and you lived abroad for like 14 years. You were in the USSR when it was a very violent time, um, the Afghan war zone as well. You must have um, seen a lot, and perhaps you draw on those experiences, and maybe you even see some, some lighter side of, of life amongst the war zones. Yeah. There were some pretty dark times. The man who hired me when I was in Afghanistan was murdered not long after I was hired. And that was... And he, you were hired to do what? I was working in microfinance, mm -hmm. which is a development program which provides very small loans, mainly to women, so they can run businesses. Okay, so you, you go to the USSR, you're hired there to do this job, and within a short amount of time, the person who hired you was murdered. Well, that was actually in Afghanistan. Oh, okay. He was probably murdered by terrorists. The criminals were never caught, which is the difference between reality and a cozy mystery novel like the Paranormal Museum, because in a mystery novel, you catch it's the bad resolved. Guys. You catch the bad guy. Justice is served. Mm -hmm. um, in real life, unfortunately, that doesn't always happen. Okay, so you can tap into your life experiences and writing your books. And is this your first book? No, it's my tenth. Your tenth. Congratulations. Thank you. you must like what you do. I love <laughs> it. I love it. I feel so privileged. Yeah. Okay. So tell me about this book. Why would I want to buy this book? Well, it's fun. Okay. It's about a young woman who gets railroaded into running a paranormal museum, even though she doesn't believe in the paranormal and really doesn't know anything about it. And since this is a cozy mystery novel, of course, the first thing she finds is a body. And the second thing she finds is a really angry cat. <laughs> At first I was thinking, okay, I'm imagining the Winchester Mystery House until you got to the body part. <laughs> you know, <laughs> not the part of a body, but the body part. Like yeah. there was, okay, so <laughs> tell me more. Without well, giving it all away. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to write something fun and lighthearted, unlike my Afghan experiences. Again, the cozy mystery in some ways is the total opposite. Mm -hmm. Cozies are usually set in a small town. The characters are quirky. There's often an animal with some real character. And again, the mystery is resolved by an amateur sleuth. So this, I really wanted to bring in some fun and weirdly enough, some love. There's a very, some very strong family elements to it. Um, so I think it's a book that people can just really relax and enjoy and hopefully have a good laugh. The first thing I thought is this is going to make a really great summertime read. I sure hope so. Mm -hmm. How long did it take you to write this book? It's, I have this system where it takes me about six weeks to four, excuse me, eight weeks to write the book. And then I set it aside for about two months just to kind of let it marinate. And then I come back to it to do the editing. And it usually takes another six to eight weeks to edit it. And then it goes to the publisher and they go through their process as well. So it's actually a pretty long lag time between when I finish the first draft and it actually gets published. Mm -hmm. and what made you and what inspired you to write your very first book? I mean, you came from this finance background. All of a sudden, you're this acclaimed writer. I don't know how acclaimed I am, <laughs> you're but I'm on the show. Yes, you are. Oh, this is big. This is, <laughs> well, it's big for me. It's big for all of us. Um, well, I had come back from working overseas, and I just wasn't fitting into the California job market. I've been doing this wacky thing called microfinance, which is really cool, but nobody really understands it or knows how to, how to apply microfinance to a job here in California. Mm -hmm. And I, was, I struggled for a long time, and then I was brainstorming job ideas. And when you brainstorm, no idea is a bad idea. And so I brainstormed metaphysical detective. And what would a metaphysical detective do? And what would she look like? And what would her name be? And I came up with the Riga Hayworth series of uh, metaphysical detective agency, which is a, a different series. It's more, more of an urban fantasy mystery blend. I love your mind and the way it works. I really do. And I was reading in your bio that you love to watch, what was it, reruns of Ghost Whispers yeah. while drinking red wine. So I can just imagine your mind on red wine. You're gonna, you have another book in you. 
Oh, lots. <laughs> as long as the red wine keeps flowing, it's all good. <laughs> yeah, well, I want to thank you so much for being here. The name of your book is, go ahead, I'll let you do it. The Perfectly Proper Paranormal Museum. All right, and you know what? All you have to do is log on to her website to find out more information about that. And I'm going to spell it out for you, K-I-R-S-T-I-N-Y-S-W-E-I-S-S dot com. Okay, that's, oh, wow, and it's right there on your TV screen. I like that cover, too. It looks really good. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you all for being here today. This has been a lot of fun. I'm going to go on out and get that. That's my summer read now, too. Oh, thank you so much, Roberto. It's great being here. Thank you. Well, that's it for this week. We're going to be back with more Bay Area Focus next week. For Michelle Griego, I'm Roberta Gonzalez. Take care of one another and make it a great day, everyone.